Namaste and welcome to Pods by PEI, a policy discussion series brought to you by Policy Entrepreneurs Inc. My name is Lasta Josi. In today's episode, we have my conversation with Santosh Dahal on climate change, changing flood trends, and flood management along Nepal-India border. Santosh has a decade-long experience in the areas of climate change adaptation, disaster management, and humanitarian response. In the course of his career, he has provided expertise on social mobilization, advocacy, and capacity building to central and local government authorities, National Red Cross Society chapters, and local partners. He is currently a senior technical advisor at Plan International Nepal and a visiting faculty at Trivuvan University. In this episode of The Brief, I talked to Santosh about a paper he recently co-authored, Rich Water, Poor People, Potential for Transboundary Flood Management between Nepal and India. The paper explores flood-related challenges along the Nepal-India border, particularly in the Koshi and the Gandak River basins. Santosh and I discussed the issue of climate change and the region's changing flood patterns, the challenges faced by the vulnerable communities, and current flood management efforts with solutions recommended for the region. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome Santosh and thank you for joining us at Pods by PEI. For today's episode, we are referencing Rich Water, Poor People, Potential for Transboundary Flood Management between Nepal and India, a 2021 paper you co-authored. This article explores potential action for flood management to enhance resilience in communities and river basins through Nepal-India collaboration. Let's begin by laying out the context scenario of flooding in our Himalayan region, especially the Koshi and the Gandak rivers, which are the main focus of your paper. Can you please tell our listeners about the trends in the floods in the region? In both Nepal and in India, flooding is associated with the southwest monsoon season, uh, which normally starts in June and lasts until end of September. In Nepal, almost 80% of total annual precipitation falls in this monsoon season. The flooding in Koshi and Gandak rivers is seen mainly in the monsoon season and the post-monsoon season. Also, flooding in this river area is very uh, high, uh, especially in the transboundary areas. Before we go any further, I would like you to expand on one of the interesting issues you had noted in your paper. That quote, not all floods are bad, which is contrary to how we usually associate floods with. Destruction and devastation. Can you please elaborate on this? Not all floods are bad. As mentioned in our paper, they also bring benefits in many ways by recharging groundwater, making soil more fertile, increasing nutrients in some soil types, Flood water also provides much needed water sources in dry regions. Fresh flood water in particular play a key role in maintaining the ecosystem of different river corridors and key factor for maintaining the floodplain diversity. So you state that floods have good economic value added to the lives and livelihoods of people and also that it is a natural phenomena and is a very integral part of the riverine ecosystem. However, you also mentioned that there has been some changes in flood patterns in the region. What are the factors that play an important role in impacting the flood? There is a a change in the flooding pattern as compared to past. The floodings are seen after the monsoon period. The rainfall in the major monsoon season initiates at the initial phase of the monsoon, but we always face the rainfall at the late monsoon season and after the monsoon seasons. Also, the flood intensity and the water level in the flood have increased. The erratic and intense rainfall is due to the effect of climate change and global warming. Shifting our conversation slightly back to the paper, where we talk mostly about Kosi and Gandak Basin, uh, we are well aware that the water that floods the Tarai region in Nepal also caused significant damage in the northern area of Bihar in India. What has all this meant to the lives and livelihoods of the communities, especially of the vulnerable population? The communities in Nepal residing in the border of India and northern part of Bihar and UP. The major challenge they face is food insecurity, where uh, most of the paddy fields are washed away by the flooding. And another issue seen is the health issues. 
especially chronic diseases have been seen uh, uh, after the post flooding water sanitation hygiene issues have also been seen because in those areas most of the people uh, they do open defecation uh, where they do not have proper toilets where they don't they do not have proper drinking water facilities where all the water gets inundated into the deep tube wells where the water gets contaminated and the purification of such tube wells is very less so people face different kinds of health issues also the migration is very high after the flooding to sustain their livelihood or to leave children and the parents living in the households as we see people in those areas they have migrated to different parts of the world for foreign employment that has created forced migration so there are many economic social cultural effects seen after the flooding in those areas clearly the impact of flood on the riverine communities is significant however floods are not rare events but rather an annual occurrence in Kosi and the Gandak rivers in this context i'm curious to know what is happening for the flood management what are some of the mechanisms in place for the management of floods in this region flood management is uh, very crucial and very important if we talk about flood management we need to think about the disaster management cycle where there are three phases preparedness response and recovery and flood management comes in all these three stages but in our country context and maybe in the neighboring country also there is less investment in preparedness and more investment in response due to this the flood management is becoming very difficult for the government and people are losing their life and properties so to minimize this we need to invest more on preparedness for example preparedness means early warning system establishment of flood early warning systems river gauges in the rivers so that the community gets the lead time so that they can because we cannot control the flood we cannot stop the flood the flood comes but the effect of the flooding can be minimized so in that context we need to think about flood management from the community perspective and the f- information exchange between the two governments is very less for example if you go through the formal government process the department of hydrology and metrology issues information from kathmandu office that has to go to its uh, field basin office in sinduli and from sinduli it goes to central water commission in delhi and from delhi it comes to patna uh, and from patna to the districts and districts to the community so it takes 3 to 4 days communities have been playing a crucial role in the bottom up approach to disaster risk and management Could you please shed some light on what roles are community playing in the management of floods? Uh the community play a crucial role is in flood management and to save their life and properties from the flood. Well I want to give an example in Nepal and India have a re- relations that is called beti relations means the people of Nepal gets married to India and Indian people get married to Nepal. So they have a family relations between Nepal and India. and the community play a very important as well as the proven examples are there for saving the life of the people of their family for example in ratu river basin uh, there is a community flood early warning systems established by ishi mode where the community gets exchanged of information from one community to another community through telephone or through sms similar in the gondak and koshi river basins one of the organizations which i i used to work earlier have established one transboundary citizen forum where the members are from nepal and india including the local government stakeholders from india and nepal where they have established a communication channel uh, at what time the flooding information will come and how how to disseminate the message instantly to the beneficiaries or to the communities in the field similarly in mahakali and karnali river basins another organization have also established transboundary forums where they meet and exchange their information and communicate to different media and yearly also they do a joint simulation exercise involving all the government stakeholders and to make the government accountable about the importance of communications of flood information during monsoon season it is great to know that the management effort has been initiated from the community level nonetheless there might be some areas of improvements and changes from both state and community level now moving forward let's steer our conversation towards the recommendation based on your research what are some of the main recommendations you have put forth to build more flood resilient communities 
our paper have recommended to review the exchange of information between the governments and trickling down such information to the communities is important. Another recommendation is that we have uh, established uh, community forums in Nepal and India for exchange of information during flooding. So such forums should be recognized by both the governments and institutionalize them so that they can instantly transfer messages to the communities. Another thing, we need not to forget the traditional way of managing flood and adopting the community's traditional disaster management. So we need to take that perspective also. And another recommendation is that a robust early warning system, especially community-based flood early warning system needs to be established with ownership of Nepalese and Indian government uh, so that the people of the vulnerable communities get much more lead time to save their life and properties. And especially we need to think about saving the lives of the most vulnerable communities, especially the girls and women are much more affected from the flooding, but they are always neglected because they have to depend upon their household activities as per our tradition in those areas. Also, Santosh, you have been working with non-governmental agencies and civil society organizations for a majority of your career. Can you share us some of your experience on what type of collaborations are taking place on the topic of flood management? I have been working in flood management, uh, especially disaster management sectors, for more than a decade when I have invested time with the communities working in the field to understand their knowledge, to understand their religious beliefs, to understand their feelings. So I want to give you one example. In 2008, there was no flood early warning system established in Kailali. But after the establishment of flood early warning system in Kailali and Kanchanpur, the death toll was decreased from 13 to 1. So that was a great uh, achievement. But there is also lack of collaboration to minimize the duplication. There are different organizations, but every organization has their own mandate to work in the field. But a joint collaboration between the organizations and that's linking with the government systems should be strengthened. Another thing is that we need to lobby with the government for investment more on preparedness rather than investing more on response and recovery part. And we also need to think about the livelihood opportunities. Once the flood comes and all the paddy fields are swiped away, so the communities doesn't have anything to eat. So we need to think in that perspective, linking the communities with the livelihood system so that they can recover their livelihood even after the flooding. And especially what I feel is that information exchange or information management is very crucial in case of flooding. So that's why we need to collaborate with the academic institutions. Uh, they have uh, prescribed some varieties as flood tolerant, dot tolerant varieties. Such varieties of different things uh, needs to be introduced and enforced by the government to the communities so that they can empower themselves. Now going beyond your paper, how are the issues of floods, disaster risk reduction and climate change being addressed in international and global platforms such as COP27 that is taking place this November. Thank you uh, for relating this question. This is very interesting. Uh, every year COP happens and uh, developed nations, they lack signing the agreement to re reducing the global temperature by 1.5 because they have more contribution to global warming. So uh, Nepal government is also participating in COP and the new topic have been arised that is uh, loss and damage. Different research have been initiated and Nepal also has published a report on loss and damage. So all the disasters now they are happening as you compare to past five to a decade, all are climate induced disasters. So the climate change not only talk about the climate change, they also that should be linked with the disaster management. So in that context, we need to think of investing more on mitigating the climate crisis impacts and increasing the most adaptive capacity of the community. We need also to lobby with the developed countries that how much they have contributed to the global warming. They need to invest that in the poor or developed countries to mitigate the impacts of climate change. But we are not getting such funds. So the government also should have negotiations. They have different negotiations meeting in the COP, whereas the government people should negotiate with trickling down those funds in our country to increase the adaptive capacity of the people. Thank you, Santosh. It was an interesting information. I find 
it quite interesting. So finishing off, do you want to convey anything to our listeners? At last, I, I want to read one or two sentences that has been given uh, as a recommendation in our paper. Transboundary water management through applicable of sustainable solutions has the potential to generate numerous benefits, more international trade, promote climate change adaptation, resilience, increase economic growth, promote food security, and improve governance. Also, transboundary flood management is becoming a somewhat a community issue, somewhat a political issue, and somewhat a national issue between the two governments. And finally, investing on preparedness, linking with climate-induced disasters is very important at this current context. In the next decade, we will be having more impact of climate-induced disasters. So we need to have a sustainable disaster risk management and increasing the resilience of the community, linking with the livelihood. Thank you so much, Santosh, for joining us and giving us your time. We wish you luck for your future endeavors and hope for rich water and prosperous people. Thank you, Lassa, and thank you, PI, for providing me this opportunity. Thanks for listening to Pods by PEI. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Santosh Tahar on the issues of climate change, changing flood trains, and flood management along Nepal-India border. Today's episode is part of The Brief. It was produced by Saurav Lama with support from Nijin Rai, Kushi Hang, Chedon Kangsakar, and Aparna Powder. This episode was recorded at Mint Studio and edited by Saurav Lama. Our theme music is courtesy of Rohit Sakya from Jindabad. If you liked today's episode, please subscribe to our podcast. Also, please do us a favor by sharing us on social media and leaving a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to the show. For PES video-related content, please search for Policy Entrepreneurs on YouTube. To catch the latest from us on Nepal's policy and politics, please follow us on Twitter at tweet to pei That's T W E E T followed by the number two and P E I, and on Facebook at Policy Entrepreneurs Inc. You can also visit PEI Center to learn more about us. Thank you once again from me, Lasta Josie. We'll see you soon in our next episode.